Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to talk about nucleic acid. So nucleic acid is a polymer examples are DNA and RNA okay so DNA and RNA are the examples for nucleic acids so if it is a polymer it should have a monomer isn't it like for proteins we have amino acids as the monomer so here for nucleic acid the monomer is called nucleotide okay so now we're gonna learn about the monomer nucleotide so nucleotide contains three components in common so they have a pentyl sugar and they have a phosphate group and they have a nitrogenous base that's a base it's like the adenine tymine guanine cytosine those things so i'm just going to label them as um, to indicate the nitrogenous base okay so these are the three components of nucleotides now let's see a very special nucleotide which are needed in the cells which we all know as the energy currency inside the cells ATP so yeah ATP they have three components it's obvious because it is a nucleotide so it should have a pento sugar and it should have a nitrogenous space as this ATP if I say the extension of ATP which is adenosine triphosphate adenosine T indicates tri and P is phosphate yes okay so here it contains a pentyl sugar called ribose and the nitrogenous base it contains is adenine and a special character of ATP is it has three phosphate groups as it is a triphosphate in other words if I go in detail about the structure you know this is adenine so if adenine binds with the ribose sugar we call this as adenosine and these are phosphate groups so if one phosphate group binds with adenosine we call it as AMP which means adenosine monophosphate and if the adenosine binds with two phosphates we call ADP which is adenosine diphosphate and the last one when it binds with three phosphate the molecule we get is ATP which is adenosine triphosphate so you can see here in this molecule you can think of these bonds between the phosphate groups like energy packed strings so what happens inside the cell when you need energy this ATP molecule release one of this phosphate by breaking this energy path molecule so it will release ADP and PI we'll talk about the reactions uh, in a minute so so this is the basic structure of ATP so it contains the ribose for pentose adenine as a nitrogenous base and it has three phosphate groups okay 
So, and you also need to know where we need ATP in the cell. So, we need ATP in the active transport, obviously, so to, for the movement of carrier proteins. And we also need ATP for muscle movements. That's why we have loads of mitochondria, which release energy during aerobic respiration. Okay, so this is the reaction of how it releases energy. So ATP molecules, they are reacting with water. That means hydrolysis reaction and it releases ADP and PI, which is inorganic phosphate, and it releases the energy which are used inside the cells. So as the water is needed in the reaction to break down the ATP, we call this forward reaction as hydrolysis. Okay, and the backward reaction you can see here ADP, PI and energy together form the molecule ATP which also releases the water. So we can call this reaction as condensation reaction. An additional thing here, you can see this condensation reaction is ADP accepts the PI. So we can also name this condensation reaction as phosphorylation because the phosphate group is accepted by the ADP so this is the phosphorylation reaction okay and okay so that's it for ATP now let's move to our polymers which is DNA and RNA okay so DNA, as you all know, we can find the DNA in the nucleus. So the monomer is a nucleotide, but in here we have the monomer, as we said earlier, we have a pentose sugar, nitrogenous base, and a phosphate group, yes. So here, the pentose sugar it has is the deoxyribose. So this is a one word, as I have no space on, on splitting it. So deoxyribose sugar is the pentose sugar which is present in DNA, or the nucleotides which make up the DNA. So I can name this nucleotide as deoxyribonucleotide because it contain deoxyribose as the sugar. Okay, so phosphate groups is similar in every nucleotide and if, when we go to the nitrogenous base, it might contain one of these, adenine, which we usually indicate as A, thymine, which we label as T, and guanine which we label as G cytosine which we label as C okay so this is the basic structure of a DNA molecule and I also want to discuss about this nitrogenous big base a little bit detailed um, so these nitrogenous base, depending on their structure, the chemical structure, we can categorize them into two groups. So they are purines and pyrimidines. Okay, so purines, they contain two rings in their chemical structure and the pyrimidine they contain only one ring so that's why we call them as purine and pyrimidine so i would say pyrimidine is the cut version 
of pyrene. That means for pyrimidine, it contains cytosine, uracil, which is new, which is present only in RNA. Okay. Um, yeah, thymine, you know, thymine is part of DNA. And pyrenes, the rest are adenine and guanine. So it's easy for remembering. Like pyrenes, they have two rings. So pyrimidines are the cut versions of purine. That means they contain only one ring. Cut is the first letter of the nitrogenous base, which is in the pyrimidine group. Okay, now let's go back to our DNA. So we said in the DNA, it has pentose, sugar, deoxyribose, and it has phosphate group, and it has the nitrogenous base, ATGC. So the out of this ATGC, the, you know the DNA molecule from the GCSE, we call it as it contains a double helix, or it, it is double helix in the structure. So it has two strands, and they are called anti-parallel strands. We'll see why we call it as anti-parallel. Okay, so again I'm going back to the deoxyribonucleotide. Okay, so phosphate, so nitrogenous base maybe A. So this should bind with another nucleotide and another nucleotide and another nucleotide. So, it will form the chain. So, let's see how it forms bond. So, let's say another molecule comes here, the nucleotide. So, I'm going to label this carbon as 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, and it has carbon over here. Five prime, and again, I'm going to label the carbons: one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. Okay, so when these two molecules, these two nucleotides bind, they form the bond between three prime carbon and the phosphate group. Okay, so they release a water molecule by condensation reaction. So remember, if they release water, that means condensation reaction. Water condense. You can think of the water condensing. Yeah, in, inside the condenser, so it gives water. So yeah, it forms a bond called. Phosphodiester bond. Okay, phosphodiester bond. You should know the name of this bond. So, likewise, they will form the compound. So, let's say in between these two, there are loads of nucleotides bound. So, you can see here. If you look at this one, that means the first nucleotide I've drawn here, this 5' prime end of the carbon is free. And if you look at this one, let's pretend, let's imagine this is the last, like from this chain, this is the last nucleotide. And it contains the 3' prime end which is free. So we call this chain as 5' prime, we can label 5' prime all the way down 3 prime okay now if we draw the second shape okay let's let me draw it so yeah now as i said earlier they are anti-parallel and they will bind okay, i have no space Okay, let me shorten this to allow space for me to draw. Okay, so A, T. 
So the next strand of the molecule, the nucleotides arrange in this way. They form hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs. So A always binds with T. So the nucleotide which contains thymine will bind to it. So yeah, this is how they form bond. And now these two again adenine the nucleotide which contains adenine as the nitrogen space now will bind to this one so you can see here again three prime and this three here five prime i'm not sure whether you can see it so five prime n is three here so this strand is called three prime to five five prime okay so that's why we call these two chains are anti-parallel one chain five prime to three prime and another chain five prime to three prime sorry 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 is three prime to five prime yeah that's why we call these two chains are anti-parallel okay mm, yeah so this is the structure of the dna molecule now rna the difference is they contain so if I go back to the nucleotide, which make up the RNA, they contain ribose sugar as their pentose sugar. Remember, in DNA it was deoxyribose, but in RNA it is ribose. Okay, they have a phosphate group and they have the nitrogenous base, but they have adenine. Instead of thymine, they have uracil, they have guanine, and they have cytosine. Okay. So they like the same way how the DNA or the deoxyribonucleotides bind it, they also bind to another nucleotide forming a straight chain. So RNA, not like DNA, they don't form any double or they don't have double helix structure, they are only single stranded. Okay, so sometimes they might they may form loop. But they, they won't form any double helix structures. Okay, so that is RNA. And another difference, or oh, there are three types of RNA. mRNA. We call that as messenger RNA. And tRNA, which is transfer RNA. And we have rRNA, which we call as ribosomal RNA, which is a component of ribosome. So we'll learn about these three types of RNA when we learn the next topic, which is protein synthesis in detail. So for now, that's it. Okay, so see you in the next video. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you. Bye.